Today on Tips from the Top Floor, we have a follow-up on the ethical exit debate, this time about the practice of owl baiting. Joe wonders if he can use his Lightroom hard drive with both a Mac and a PC, and Chris wants to buy a drone and wonders if he'll be allowed to fly it. This episode is brought to you by Nation's Photo Lab. Need a gift that won't be re-gifted? Create a buzz book, the new softcover photo book by Nation's Photo Lab. Relive the memories you don't want to forget, your child's first year, your wild bachelorette, or your trip to Spain. All you have to do is fill the pages with your favorite photos. It's that easy to make something truly memorable. Make every moment matter. Head to nationsphotolab.com slash buzzbooks and use code TOPFLOOR for your free buzzbook. This is Tips from the Top Floor, episode 844 for Thursday, October the 11th, 2018. Tips from the top, from the top floor, tips from the top, all right. Hey Elon, welcome, it's Chris and we are at episode 844, still in October. I'm uh, in Morocco right now when you listen to this, I'm pre-recording this. Um, because yeah, I want you to have your <laughs> your fix. And um, let's see, what can we talk about? Oh yeah, there's a quick follow-up. <laughs> I'm still with the ethical exif debate because it keeps coming up left and right. And I got an email from uh, William Garnett who writes... I have a friend who is a wildlife photographer. In our area, we get visited by snowy owls, which attract lots of photographers. Many of them use store-bought mice to bait the owls for their pictures. I thought I would share an article written by Michael Ferdman about this since your show, where you talked about the sea eagles brought this to mind. And then he sent me a link. And wow, <laughs> that is an interesting article on the practice of owl baiting, which seems to be the norm. I've, uh, I don't have any first-hand experience there, but um, the article doesn't paint a very nice picture uh, about this practice. And let me try to sum up the arguments in the article against the baiting practice. Um, I'm, I'm just quoting from the article, right? I personally don't really have all the facts about this specific case, but I think this fits really well into the ethical exif debate so, among other arguments that Michael uh, Furtman um, says or claims, uh, is he says that as soon as the owls equate humans with food, they get used to being close to humans. They even seek humans, which makes them less careful and more prone to accidents. I think that's a fair point. Uh, he also argues that like like they get getting close to vehicles that they shouldn't get close to because of course other humans are not photographers possibly so there's always a chance of misunderstandings right and uh, he also argues that th this will make them the owl cease to hunt naturally which will then endanger them when the photographers aren't there so they kind of forget how to hunt. And he claims that baiting presents an inaccurate depiction of owl behavior, which I also can support because um, the owls, I think, uh, will and, and, and the type of mice that are used are often store-bought. And it's kind of a weird, a weird topic, uh, but it's definitely worth a read. I, I'm, yeah, the article has made me think and it's good food for thought, I think. Definitely worth a read if you want kind of a more rounded picture of this kind of photography. So check that out. Link is in the show notes. Hi, Chris. This is Joe from Rhode Island, the United States. I've got a question for you. I have my Lightroom catalog and photos on an external hard drive. I connect that to my PC uh, when I'm post-processing. Now I've got a laptop and a small screen. My daughter has a Mac with a large screen. Is it possible to move the hard drive from the Windows PC to the Mac. Uh, I've checked the hard drive, it's a Western Digital. It says it's formatted for Windows. Is there a different type of hard drive I should use? It could be formatted for both um, operating systems. Uh, any advice, we appreciate it. Love the show, thanks for everything you do. Thanks, Joe. Uh, so you, you, if I understand it correctly, you want to use a, a hard drive with your Lightroom catalog and your photos and everything on it. Uh, both on Windows and on a Mac, um, which it's an, it's an interesting question because, I mean, let's just take a quick detour into like file systems. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> not trying to be too techy here, but, you know, file systems are kind of, uh, they are kind of system specific. So Mac 
would typically use HFS plus or the newer APFS, whereas Windows will typically use NTFS. As these, that's the latest, the latest that I know of. Maybe something has changed in the last years, but they are kind of not natively exchangeable. I mean, the Mac speaks its file system, the Windows speaks its file system, and you cannot just simply interchange it. Mac doesn't speak NTFS and Windows doesn't speak HFS plus, as far as I know. And while there are tools that you can install that kind of would teach a Mac to read NTFS, I've never done that myself. I've never done any serious research into that area. So I don't really know how good those tools are. Um, but in order to make this work, you'd need a file system that works on both platforms. Possibly XFAT might be a possibility. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the good news is um, the Lightroom catalog itself should be binary compatible, which means both the Mac and Windows version can use it. The, the file itself uh, should be interchangeable, which means uh, you could use the catalog file for either versions. That should theoretically be possible if the hard drive, the underlying hard drive, kind of uh, works in that way. Now I have I have moved a catalog once from Windows to the Mac by copying it over and that worked without a flaw. You have to of course have to have the 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 actual software compatible for Windows or Mac, but the catalog file, the picture files uh, should in theory be possible, but you, you can feel probably feel that I'm not on um well the German saying would be I'm on thin ice here. Um so I suggest you go on the Slack. The Tips from the Top Floor Slack is an awesome place. And there's a channel on the Tips from the Top Floor Slack called Tech Talk. I will link to that in the show notes. And we have Rusty Russ, our CIO, our Chief Invitation Officer, who will be happy to send you an invitation. The link to that is also in the show notes. And then that's probably the best place to discuss these kind of things. Hey, a quick call to action for you guys. Not a sponsored segment here, but um, just me asking you to send in your questions and things. Since uh, I'd say four or five weeks when I began my my, my fall travels, well, it's more like six to eight weeks from this episode, um, you guys have been so awesome sending in like a ton of questions, great stuff, everything is just like Joe, for example, right now, or like um, Chris right after this segment. It, this is awesome. This is what I want this show to be. I want your questions. I want your inputs. I want uh, stuff from you that, um, yeah, that makes this whole thing interactive and it makes it so much more enjoyable for myself recording an episode. And uh, I hope you can tell from the enthusiasm in my voice. So uh, keep them coming. Keep your questions coming. Pick up your smartphone or start any voice recording app and just yeah, talk into it. I promise I'll make you sound good. And then send it to voice at tfttf.com. That's voice at tfttf.com. I really want to hear from you. Hi, Chris. It's Chris in the UK. I've got a question about drones. I'm thinking of um, investing in a small drone maybe a Mavic Air uh, in the UK but I've got a question about where in the UK it's now possible to even fly a drone uh, within the law and also what your thoughts are on whether the restrictions will get worse um, or whether it's a worthwhile investment for somebody who wants to take their photography to a new level um, 400 feet I guess thanks thank you Chris um, okay that, <laughs> that is a very local local question because those drone regulations drone laws are different everywhere you fly uh, some countries won't even allow drones in uh, in some countries it's more like yeah just don't be just don't be an idiot um, it, it really depends on where you are and uh, I, I've, I've been dealing with this a bit because I have a Mavic Air myself and uh, well I talked about it here on the show it broke and I couldn't film in Ireland which wouldn't which would have been fairly easy from the a regulations point of view uh, i could have flown in norway um now i'm as you listen to this i'm in morocco and i will not have the drone with me because morocco doesn't want drones so i don't want them to take it away from me but yeah the general question with the drone is of course there is regulation uh, almost everywhere in the world now and that restricts you where you can fly um 
And the question is, will those become worse? I don't think so for the time being, because it's not like everyone has a drone. And I don't think everyone will have a drone. It's still a bit more involved than you think. And uh, the use fullness of a drone is kind of limited i mean it's fun to fly with this thing it's fun to shoot video from the top but then what you do what do you do with the video if you are not like let's say someone like me who might use it to advertise workshops and things so um i, I know of a lot of people who bought a drone being really enthusiastic about it and then only flew it three times and and uh, have it collect dust so that is always a possibility and uh, yeah, you can take your photography to a new level. You will get shots from different locations. I mean, that's the major appeal of a, of flying a drone with a camera. To shoot from uh, higher up in the Z-axis where you can usually not get to in any other way. So uh, that for me is one of the big appeals too. And you will see more drone photography from me in the future. But um, as I said, it's very local. It's very um, depends on where you live and... Uh, in the UK, there there's a, the the Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, that uh, regulates that, and then there is a website called dronesafe.uk, dronesafe.uk, um, which looks kind of official. I'm not sure. I, I googled all this. Um, I will link in the show notes also the link to like uh, uh, the CAA's website about consumer um, drones, about unmanned aircrafts and drones. I mean, the, the regulations I gleaned from that are like 400 feet, yep, 120 meters high. Um, you have to have line of sight, um, these kind of things. Um, the website has links to apps that can help you there. Um, it also has like more details on what's called the drone code, which I think is May, mainly the drone regulation so yeah line of sight you have a maximum altitude um, i find this in a lot of different regulations around the world the distance of people minimum distance of people and uh, two people in property when you fly side sideways distance of like 50 meters or more here in germany it's more like 100 meters uh, and of course as almost everywhere else you have to stay away from airports and airfields and here in Germany, that is major airports, five kilometers. So if you live within five kilometers of an airport, um, you have to drive out somewhere to fly this thing. And then here in Germany, I think you cannot fly in nature preserves. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's not the same everywhere. And to kind of help me, I use uh, two things. One is an app called DroneMate. And... It's an iPhone app. I don't think it's that reliable. Um, I've seen stuff in there that was factually not right, but at least I think it can give me an idea or, and where to look. And it's also, it features also user inputs. So others can kind of uh, put in some of their experiences. And then the DJI app. If you buy a DJI drone, it comes with an app and that will also like warn you if you're trying to fly in a no-fly zone. So you will get... Uh, warning from that app too and then go online go online and find the according authority and their official regulation most countries that i know of have either are working on drone regulations or they have already kind of uh, made some something official now there are of course other reasons why you might not be able to fly and uh, one of the most important one, ones is the weather and uh, for that i use a little app that helps me kind of gauge if I if it's if it's worth going out to fly anyway, and that's called UAV forecast, UAV forecast, which um, among other things will give you the wind speeds at ground level and at 100 meters altitude, which is kind of important. If if you don't have wind at the ground and you fly a drone and you fly all the way up, uh, you might run into issues with the wind being too strong up there for your your drone to be able to keep up. So. Yeah, check that out and uh, send some photos and some video. I'd love to see some of that stuff. And that was it for this episode of Tips from the Top Floor. Thanks for supporting the show. You guys are, as usual, the most awesome crowd out there. Um, did I mention I have the best fans? 
best listeners, the best audience here. Also, thanks to everyone who supports the show by going to iTunes and putting a bit of a rating in there, some stars, or by supporting it any other way. There's Patreon, there's word of mouth. I'm just grateful for all your support and every little bit helps. And you can find more at tfttf.com slash support. Thank you. Music for the show by Jeff Smith, sound partner, heads by the Cogrid Publishing and Slack Challenges by Release Pixie, Mad Rest Arms, and Slack Invitations by Chief Invitation Officer CIO Rusty Russ. And the link to get on the Slack is, of course, in the show notes. I remember. My name is Chris Marquardt. You'll find me on social media, including Mastodon at Chris M A R Q U A R D T. Now go out and take amazing photos. Be nice to each other. And happy shooting. <laughs>